Alrighty, well, good afternoon, everybody. Well, um, I'm uh, I'm in a bit of a rush right now. I had just finished up my stream here about 10, 15 minutes ago, and I'm starting to work on my blog post. But, or let me back up. I'm starting to work on my Final Fantasy 14 blog post. Um, and uh, I do have a fair amount I need to talk about. So this is going to be kind of a double header video. I have uh, two groups that I need to showcase. So. And then, like usual, I'm going to have some music running in the background. This time around, it's going to be Resonator, or Warp Lord album. So, let me go ahead and get that going. And, um, also, I'm having problems with my taskbar. Um, there's a... It's supposed to have a peak mode. I just need to hover my mouse over the icon, and it'll pop up a whole bunch of windows that are related to that group. Well, it's not doing that. I have to manually click the icon and then the uh, specific window in that cluster I want. So, like I said, I am going to kind of rush through this. So, but, um, the first team I want to demo... Now, normally, I very rarely, in fact... Yeah, I need to get that out of there. That, Yeah, this is, um, Veneratus is a recent troop that got added today, so it's still kind of untested. And then I believe red and red and brown. This is my Dragonola team. Now, up until recently, I very, very rarely used this. And even then, um, the only real reason I use this team is for Divinity. Mainly for cleansing all the allies. Um, there's a... Normally, if uh, whatever I'm running um, has debuffs that require me that require that have to be cleansed off. Normally, I do my main free matches team. Most of the time, Royal Honey cleansing all allies when matching four or more gems usually does the trick. Well, sometimes you come across enemies like say, somebody like Obsidious stuns all enemies on four or five gem matches. If this goes off then the queen is pretty much useless because when she's stunned, she's going to get locked out of all these traits. So, so sometimes it's nice to have a... It's nice to have a, a team that has... Basically, I have to cleanse them manually. But this week is a new week. Um, the emphasis is going to be on Dragon's Claw which is uh, the birthplace of dragons, so it's gonna be a, it's a really strong dragon theme this week. Well, I have the team that does the trick. And um, I think all the, uh, all, the, all the events for this week can be used by a team that I'd always been using. So, but let me go ahead and give you a quick rundown on how it works. First off, the Dragon Guard, uh, the class. As you can see here, I'm a dragon. Uh, gem mastery is uh, red. And then holy armor, kind of good. Um, ally dragons gain one life and magic on four or five gem matches. That can add up pretty quick. Here. I don't have a... I'm using a mace, so shield and jewelry don't matter. Um, 
kind of a good thing I check. I guess I can grab that. Uh, gain barrier at the start of the battle. Very important to have. Create a firestorm. Anyway, um, but this is... I guess the big one here is probably these two. Uh, skull damage reduction and... Uh, buffing, er buffing everybody's life and magic. Four or five gem matches. And then we got the weapon. Uh, damage is an enemy. So, since uh, there's four dragons in this team, 36 plus 24. If my math is right, 60. And then it's going to create a mix of uh, 24 red and purple. I say 24 because, again, there's more dragons in this team. Dragon Soul, he's... Man. The big one here is just uh, exploring uh, gems. Deal 8 damage. 8 damage times... Uh, Three, six, nine, eight, seventeen. Somehow I came up with about twenty. Oh yeah, twenty. Yeah, four dragons in the team, so twelve plus eight is twenty. He blows up some gems. And uh, the, if you see a purple number, that means it's uh, it's a variable number, increased or decreased by magic. And then again, Divinia. This is the main reason why I'm... Probably the main reason why this team even exists. Four or five gem matches. Random positive on. Uh, random buff on an ally. But again, the big one. Exploring the red gems can be nice. But like I said, that's uh, mainly the territory... Or the jurisdiction of my Dragon Soul. Because... From, because of the, the troop I'm about to show next... You only want to explode all the red gems as a last resort. But again, the big one here is cleansing everybody. I'm sorry to sound like a broken record, but usually the only time I bring them out is if, uh, if whatever I'm fighting uh, can completely shut down Queen Beatrix. So I, that means I'm going to have to cleanse everybody manually. And then Wilburath is a fairly recent addition. So. The boss dragon give two magic to all red allies, which means everybody except my hero when you're matching red gems. Dealing uh deals damage to all enemies, boosting by red gems, plus two with each red gem I have on there. And then there's a 10% chance for an extra turn boosted by red gems, which again is why uh you only want to explode all the reddies as a last resort because you need all the red gems on the board because this will increase your one it increases your damage and it also increases the likelihood of you getting an extra turn oh also um i am i am eating a couple of nutty buddy bars as well so, so i'm gonna i'm gonna do a cookie run in fact, I just remembered. I actually remembered to do this. So, the weekly event, uh, a matter of faith. In fact, let me, uh, and in these, in these weekly events, sometimes you get medals and they, uh, they increase the, uh, it's a buff to your damage, to all damage, both skull and spell. Yeah, I actually remember to do this. So, and once again, this is a guild event, so everybody in your guild contributes to this as, oh wow, someone did. And I actually saved the battle, so to I have I'd have to go on the uh, the Gems of War forums, and there's a scoring system 
Um, you get uh, five different battles. For the most part, level level is irrelevant. What you're looking at is the uh, color. Like uh, orange it's, is legendary. And then um and then blue is like low ranked, so hitting these higher level ones give you more rewards. But again, the actual level itself doesn't matter. It's the uh, ranking, for lack of a better word. But yeah, luckily, I, I saved a battle this time. Last time I, I tried to show a, show an event, I used them all up, and I couldn't really show you much. So. And then, just like all these other events, there's a restriction. Uh, you can only use Divine or Dragon. So, but like I said, I... I kind of got lucky this week because I could just use the very same team that I'd always had. So. Hey, how about that? I'm getting. Started. And, um, whenever you see this guy pop up, you beat him, you get two more attempts. So. And also, you can kind of, this team here does have a fair amount of options and what gems to go after, because he creates gems, he explodes them. She can also explode all red ones, but again, you only want to do this as a last resort, because having red gems on the board makes Ruby Wrath more effective. So. But, uh, you still want to swoop up on the four and five gem matches, especially the red ones, because it's going to give two magic to the bottom three guys here. And you can go after purple, too. Yeah. Okay, so... And, um, and this does this does also deal uh, 20 damage. So great for all low level content. And then 61. And if you look on the right, the boost. So we got 87. Then you have a then you have I believe a 36% chance of getting an extra turn. I don't see any four matches, so let's go for it. Cleared it out. And those uh, those dragon medals I equipped really helped. So yeah, looks like I can do two more. But once again, um, it's still gonna give you like the uh, these here are the low. You don't get much out of them. So Infernal King, same thing. This is legendary. And then there's this too. I also wanted to show this. Um, I only really do this. When I get to like the really, really, really high level stuff where stuff takes forever to take down, you can spend extra attempts, extra sigils, and it'll increase your stats. But with what I'm fighting right now, there's no need to do it. Increases everybody's magic. So we got 89, and then uh, another 36% chance of getting an extra turn. Nope. Sorry. Remember, that's gonna deal 20 damage. Easy peasy, Japanese. Something I forgot to do at the start of this uh, video. Okay. Okay, so the sound level looks okay. And 
then we got this. So, these are all. So we'll just go ahead and go for the level 10. Oh, and um, before I get started, um, one thing you do need to do, whenever you do one of these events, is um, you'll have to spend gems for it. It's a pretty rare, um, which is a fairly rare currency. You can see it in the upper right corner. They're fairly hard to come by, but you always want to spend you always want to spend them when possible on the first two tiers. The first tier is going to give you a potion of enchantment, which uh, it increases everybody everybody's mana will increase by two per turn until you get your spell off, and then it wears off. Then it wears off. Potion of explosion. You kind of saw that on the battles. Um, it causes a little kind of a kind of a mini explosion on the board. That's what this is. And then it also gives you these, uh, as you can see, these uh, badges, which is what I have on the top. So, 80% additional damage. So, let's grab this dinky level 10. damage hmm. these here this is the, these are the rewards you get from uh, doing these battles gem relics you also get another kind I can't remember the name of it but it's a it's an upgraded version of these Yeah, we had a legendary right there, but I'm out of battles. So almost. And then you can see here how well you how well are you and everybody else in your guild did. Whereas uh, I'm in fourth. So. But like I said, this is a guild event. So everybody in your guild contributes to this. And then there's a leaderboard here too, but the uh, yeah, our guild here is top 40%. They call my granny. But anyway, that's, um, I guess, while I'm here. Let me go ahead and... So I'll up my seals. And now... So, but that's my Dragon Olagu. And so let me show you this one. Um, I have, a today, during my stream, I still have yet to name this. In fact, I guess since I'm here, um, nope. I don't know. This is kind of, this is a reference to a to a line in Ghostbusters. Um, towards the end, when um, Sigourney Weaver gets possessed and Bill Murray is like talking to her and she says something like, "There's only one, only fool," something like that. So we'll just call it because I'm kind of in a hurry here. We'll just call it Joel Zulti. But anyway, um, but during my stream today, uh, back on the tail end of it, um, I actually got, I was actually able to make this earlier, but DJ Screw, um, he's, he's, um, he's been on my stream ever since, as far back as I can remember, um, so he's pretty much, pretty much the biggest reason why I was able to craft this. So I kind of waited for him to come, to actually to actually come on my stream and actually craft him because it wouldn't have been right if he wasn't if he wasn't here to see it. But for those that don't know, Zolgoth is the most powerful troop in the game. Is hang on, let me back up. Is the most powerful troop in the game, it, to my knowledge. I mean, Impervious, you know, can't vibe. 
I mean, this instantly kill an enemy. Um, there's a drawback to this that I found out recently. I'll have to, when I go in, I'll show you what it is. But I mean, aside from that, everything else, instantly kill them. Burn and freeze all remaining enemies and you're creating skulls. And then Centura gone. Whatever you're matching, uh, four or more gems. Small chance to pop up some wild cards. And this ability here, this pretty, this is the guy that pretty much powers up Zolgov. It converts all skulls into into wild cards. And when we get in the game, I'll show you what they do. But uh, when you cast this, for every wild card that's already on the board. It's going to be an additional 10% chance. So it's a base 10%, plus 10% for, for each wild card that was on the board before you cast this. And then we got we got the old standard class, the all time classic standby here, Leprechaun. And another all time classic right here, Mountain Crusher. So needs no introduction. Like I did with the last team here, let me uh, pick up my pick up my income, and then I'm just gonna. Oh, I'll just go with this. So again, the goal being. Looking at the skulls, and ideally, you want a um, combination of skulls and everything else should result in at least a four match. Now, unless I'm wrong, I think DJ Screw might be able to explain this further. You can't, um, the colors have to be consistent. So, you would have a, you would have a purple three match here, but you're not going to get any, uh, anything out of here, so... And then you're gonna have what you'll have here is a a red three match, but that's that's it. You're not gonna get a you're not gonna get any green man or anything like that. But since I don't have much to work with at the moment, use Mountain Crusher to blow the board. And hey, how about that Zolgoth up? So the way you want to do this is um you don't want to go after the guy that's entangled because again he's gonna create a whole bunch of skulls that your opponent might be able to use against you. So, usually I just pick somebody on the bottom, and boom, he's gone. That's instant death right there. And then we got a, we got a brown four match here. Um, I'll go ahead and do that now. No wild cards up at the moment. So, and there we go. Zolgoth is up instantly. him out and we got a got a four match up here we got a green four match at the bottom too and we got three wild cards oh let me explain wild cards can as you probably expect can be matched up with any color but again it has to result in at least a three match and uh, whatever match you get out of it is gonna get you double Oh, and I forgot to mention too the uh, the two wild cards that were already on the board before I cast that is going to make it a grand total of a thirty percent chance to devour somebody. Which so that's how that works. So I'm going to go to PVP here. Now, now, when doing PvP with this team, you still want to stay away from the Yellow Medalist, because again, there is no cleanse on this, 
There's no cleanse in this group. The whole team relies on you, Dan. You, the whole team relies on you, killing him before he kills you. So, so I guess we'll go with web. We'll go with uh, this one here. Web spinner is a big one. It's all about skull damage. Hardly any green jumps at all. So we don't really have much to work with, just uh Let's see if that helps. Um that So yeah, I'm just gonna have to blow the board because I can't Well, still got some. So take out the top guy. And again, the bottom one was entangled, so any skull any skulls he manages to match ain't gonna affect me. Got a red four match. Job. So, got lucky there, it was just a 10% chance, but it's that easy. Maybe they're being casual. But there's uh, two troops. There's two troops that do shut down. Um, that do shut down Zolgoth. But so far, I haven't found it. Okay, so let's see. So rope dart. It's gonna kind of mess me up. Got a red uh, four match on the left there. Uh, lower right corner. Oh, we got a blue off. Okay, we got a green off four match. I don't think Zolgoth can use green though. He got a bunch of matches from somewhere. So I'm hoping on this next battle, I can show you a couple weaknesses. And my controller ain't working. There it goes. Nope. But again, you still want to stay away from the yellow medalist, though. So I'll tell you what, let me go to my battle log. Here we go. Leona's Tower and Enraged Karandara, they are invulnerable. They're immune to everything, including being instantly killed. So this is a, and I, this is definitely an anti-Zolgoth defense team right here. So same with Enraged Karandara, invulnerable. They're immune to everything, including cursed, including uh, being instantly killed. So. 
So uh, that, that was a lesson that I learned the hard way. So, but yeah, it does, it does shut down this team. Though. So, I'll, but yeah, despite how powerful this new team that I got, I'm still gonna leave. I'm still gonna leave this there. Okay, I bought this one too. Uh, kind of. No, well, one one. So I'm gonna go with this one here instead. Looks to be more of a challenge. that firebomb before he blows up. Okay, wild card here in the lower left corner, so it's gonna be a 20% chance that uh, he's gonna devour somebody. So, now it's gonna be a 30%. Jump. I guess uh, instantly killing people counts as spell damage. Never thought of that. Or didn't think it worked that way, but but anyway, um, that's gonna do it for me right there. Um, like I said, I just want to showcase those two teams, and I gotta get this uh, video um, uploaded and processed and all that, and I still need to get going on my Final Fantasy XIV blog post. So I gotta get. I've got like a one one hour window between 5 p.m. and 6 p.m. to get it off, so I've got plenty of work to do. But otherwise, hey, thanks for watching, everybody. I appreciate that, and I'll see you all next time. Bye now.